It's time for red flag number 10 in the second part of my Burnout Buster book, Discover Your Red Flags and What to Do About Them. So let's have a look at this. For red flag number 10, let's see if you recognise anything here. When you're on a quest to feel good enough. Ooh. This sneaks in unannounced, even when you think you're quite a confident person, competent at what you do, experienced, maybe even an expert, but it creeps in. Oprah Winfrey noted one common denominator of all the guests on her 25 year live show. Every single guest, everyone from murderer to politician, cancer survivor to Olympian, they all asked the same questions, the same question, as soon as the camera went off. What do you think that question was? Every single person, every day for 25 years, when the camera went off, said, was I okay? 25 years, every single person asked, was I okay? And the cameras went off. Everybody wasn't sure whether they'd done a good enough job whilst on camera. From president to prisoner, everybody. So how interesting is that, that no matter who you are, what you do, how good you are at what you do, we all sometimes just need to check in and say, was it enough? So with the right circumstances, we're all capable of questioning our worth. When that drives us to work even harder and ignore our health, then that's a real problem. So um, I'm going to tell you a real story now, and it was uh, about someone I once coached on their sales skills. So I was meant to... Um, observe his sales skills and uh, and then give him some tips about how to hone it and um, the interesting thing was that I was listening in to his calls and there was nothing I could tell him about about how to do it better he was brilliant he was already exceeding all targets still we had some coaching time left so we just had a little chat and I could see that he was fired up but also exhausted he didn't seem quite well so I asked him about life in general, and in a flash, it all came tumbling out. He was ill, working more hours than he was paid for, and in danger of losing his relationship because his partner was tired of coming second place to his desire to be the best seller in the team. He was on a mission, but until we talked about it, it was a mission he wasn't even conscious of. He was driven by the desire to prove himself successful enough to his dad. Now, here's the thing. At the point when we were speaking, his dad had already died a few years previously. Because Daniel hadn't consciously noticed this driver, he was ignoring all the red flags that things weren't okay. Because he was driven by this stronger, unconscious message of, I'm not yet good enough. And the problem with the, the drive towards being good enough is, it's it's not in a if it's not in a conscious way then we're not noticing when we have reached those milestones that mean oh yeah i'm good enough i've reached that i did that well done me a little pat on the back or time for a rest now we're just not noticing because all we know is this forever striving so we didn't have a long conversation and we were in an open office so it wasn't as deep and meaningful as it might have been but he recognised that this good enough driver was a road to burnout. There wouldn't have been a target big enough to scratch that terrible itch. No amount of long days and late nights would bring enough business to quieten that voice. He realised in that moment that he could recognise his amazing achievements, let go of the driver and let his get his life back. Or wait until it all hit the fan and who knows what he might lose. I'd love to tell you what happened next, but I left the office that day and didn't stay in touch. I can only hope that he made the changes and that his boss short term might have been miffed that he wasn't overachieving anymore, but it doesn't take a genius to realise that he couldn't have carried on at that pace anyway. It wasn't sustainable. We all need to find a sustainable level. 110% leads to debt. Now, I've got a second story for you because this is such a, this, this driver, this, this um, desire to figure out whether we're good enough, coming from a place of lack, a fear of not being good enough. We're constantly looking for a reason to believe that we're not good enough. So um, 
I'm going to tell you a quick story about my mum's burnout. She grew up believing she wasn't a valuable person and that you should be grateful for what you got and never expect extra. She grew up to be a caring person and worked in caring professions for decades. Being a caring person made her feel of value. This is important that we start to notice what is the, uh, the benefit we're getting from this potentially negative driver but we're getting a positive hit. When we recognise that, it, it can be our freedom. So um, the danger is when your sense of self-esteem is wrapped up in that one aspect, it's hard to press the stop button to care less, even if you're on your last legs. The challenge made her more resourceful, forming routines and finding creative ways to manage overwhelm. She, meant to, she managed to carry on much longer. It's an amazing aspect of resilience, but it can't carry on forever. The important skill to develop is knowing when to stop. She describes getting addicted to a routine of doing too much, feeling like a robot and fear of changing that routine being scarier than carrying on while being so, so tired. So um, looking after my dad at home with Alzheimer's, um, each night after she'd put him to bed, uh, she was thoroughly exhausted and often said to herself, I can't do this anymore, no more. And the next day, she would wake up anxious what the day would bring and just carried on. And the problem for my mum is that she was also a bit defensive. No one can take this from me, it's my job. It gave her a sense of who she was, purpose and value. And that needing help meant that she had failed in some way. As if she found, uh, as if she'd be found to be inadequate, which means she was doing it wrong and needed to find a new way of coping. Any alternatives to carrying on filled her with dread. Your situation may be very different from this. Um, I'm talking about a very specific caring role here, but I think the mindset can occur in any pressurised situation. My mum's driver to feel needed and not to feel that she'd failed pushed her beyond healthy limits. And uh, Nigel, who uh, I mentioned in a previous video, who's uh, also a professional speaker and who had a brain aneurysm um, because of burnout. I think it's in video one if you're interested in that and you haven't seen it yet. He describes his new policy of working less post burnout. It killed me to say no to the charity work I'd normally have jumped to do. It really illustrates this crazy emotional calculation that we do. It kills us emotionally to stop doing something, but it will kill us physically if we keep saying yes and work beyond those healthy limits. So for this particular uh, red flag then, what's the burnout buster? Here it comes. Check the evidence. There will be a variety of clues that you are doing okay or even fabulous. Listen. To compliments and accept them. Stop undermining your own achievements by responses like, oh, that was nothing, or oh, no, it was easy. And even when you're chilling out, you're still a worthwhile human being. You have a right to be here. You are enough. You don't have to be saving the world to have a right to be here, a right to have good things happen in your life. If you recognise that you're, you receive your self-worth from one particular direction, you could choose to stop the imbalance before it becomes a critical point. You need to know who you are without that role, that you are valuable without the thing that gives you the hit. To stop being driven by it or allowing it to define you. Find a way to realise that you can feel good about yourself even when you're doing nothing at all. You have a right to be here. You're an amazing human being. You are utterly precious. Please look after yourself. See you in the next video.